happy 4th of July if you're from the U.S. If you're not, you guys probably don't care. But we're going to do a market update today, and we're going to be talking about Sword and Shield, Scarlet and Violet, boxes, cases, and cards. And I just want to do a little update kind of on the overall sentiment, my overall thoughts of what's going on. A lot of people have been freaking out. Oh, everything's crashing. Everything's crashing. It's all out, you know, and we're going to talk about all of it. Right. And we're going to start off with Sword and Shield. We're going to start off with uh, the set that I'm the most heavily invested in for Sealed, which is Lost Origin. And as you guys can see right here, you know, back in May, we hit our peak and we tanked down all the way down into the 180s. But right what you guys have to understand is uh, besides there being a natural decline you know th these happen like I, i've talked about before there's a stair step effect that happens it happens with stocks it happens with cards it happens with boxes it happens with everything it's that usually shows healthy growth and explosive uh just immediate rapid growth is not sustainable long term the market's going to reject it, it it's going to tank back down so uh this right here while this might look big when you zoom out this is going to look like a stair step up and you got to understand that a lot of people were getting these boxes at a much lower price so when this shot up to 220 a lot of people were unloading their inventory okay not everyone is in the same uh mindset or monetary you know uh place some people were getting these at the pokemon center 143 value and they're not selling yet right but if you were getting these at 100 bucks or say 90 bucks a box you know you'd be making good money to sell at 220 so anyways uh, the market's cooling off and it's doing a little bit of a correction, which is fine, which is healthy. I'm not worried, right? I'm not selling, but we d went down to 180, but we are on the uptick here. And as you guys can see right here, we have sales. Uh, we're cracking. We're just about to crack 200 again, which is good. The average price is 250. So it looks like Lost Origin is back on the move. Speaking of Lost Origin, I just want to touch on the Giratina Chase card because I do think that this is a very important card. And then I do think that this card still has a lot of room to run. Uh, at the peak right here in May, we saw 480 and we're still in a little bit of a downturn down to 390. So we've retraced quite a bit, but you know, if, if you still, if you open this up, once again, this is going to be the stair stepping effect that I was telling you guys about, you know, in the $200 range, 400, but then if we cool off in the threes and then we'd go on another run slowly over time. Okay. So, uh, this might be a very good entry point for you guys to pick up some Giratinas. That being said, and I, I've said it before, and I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but I just have to say it that. I cannot predict the market. You cannot predict the market. Nobody can actually predict the market, right? So uh, if, if you're looking like for a short-term flip, I can't guarantee that this is going to immediately come up, right? But slowly over time, I do think that this card is going to rise. I just give my opinion. I try and be transparent on this on the channel. So that's something I've always tried to do, right? So uh, this could be this could dip more, but long-term, if this stair steps up, you know, into the back into the 480s into the $500 range and you got it in at 390 are you going to complain that's just my uh, opinion do with that what you will next up we have the fusion strike uh boxes here now this this set i mean man it hit about 245 right at its peak same like early may and it dipped down and it's been up so it's been holding really well now this it didn't have its, you know, Lost Origin was available. It's a little bit different story than Lost Origin, right? It's another great set. And we are seeing a dip down to its lowest at 234, and it's on an uptick, right, to two, 238. But we have seen sales right here, confirmed sales, at 244, right? We got pretty much 245, and listed average price is 250. So we're going to get this. This is going to be back up into the probably fluctuating a little bit between the 240s, 250s. You guys also have to understand what's what happens with these sealed product is uh, people are buying this to rip. There's uh, rip and shippers. There's breakers. People, you know, odds are, you know, that the the supply is just going to keep dwindling. So with these sealed booster box investments, you guys got to know that this is a long term play. OK, if we pull up the six month chart here, obviously kind of crazy, but you can see these little this little pattern it's been it's been holding really strong in that 230 so the market really values it it, it, it i don't think it's going to go below 230 so we're looking at eventually another another step up on this so fusion strike great set great box can't go wrong next up well, we'll just touch on this real quick um i picked some of the cards out of some of the sets but just wanted to touch on but the the gengar 
awesome card, right? It's it's on a bit of a downturn, kind of like the Giratina as well. I mean, it peaked at 400, down to 330. Uh, you know, that's what we're seeing sales here, 330. Listed average price is 350. Might be a good time to pick up the card. Uh, maybe let this play out since it is currently on a downturn. Uh, I'd probably let it play out a little bit longer. But once again, um, this could be an entry point for us. We just don't know how low this is going to go. Um, so it's kind of that same thing, right? You guys have to be smart about what you're going to do um, with that. So um, if it was me personally and I'm looking to pick up a Gengar and it's at 330, I'm going to wait a little bit longer and see if this continues to drop. If I could scrape that out around 300 or if somehow it drops into the 290s, that would be my point. But I'm not going to kick myself if I'm picking it up now, if that makes sense. You, you can't always time the bottoms on these. It's very hard. All right, next up, uh, Evolving Skies. I know, Evolving Skies, Evolving Skies. Everyone talks about Evolving Skies, but there's a reason. It's amazing. And I just wanted to show what, what's been going on. Like, look at this run-up we're on. Uh, you know, it's not the biggest percentage or number-wise, but, you know, we hit we hit the high 600s, almost 700. It went about, back down to the 680s, and now we're finally seeing some growth up. We broke 700. We got a 705 and a 707 sale with the listed median price median price average being nine hundred dollars a box whoa so um you know i never i don't think i ever made a prediction for this and things were going so crazy for a while it was kind of hard to do it but i'm not calling this but i would not be surprised if this was a thousand dollar box by year end i'm just saying i could see it i really could by the year end we're halfway through the year i i wouldn't be surprised at all um I don't, I don't have any Evolving Skies personally, just to be transparent. I'm not trying to pump it. Not that I'm a big enough channel to pump anything anyways, but I don't. I want to get some, but uh, I think I, I'm investing in the, in the other sets, you know, currently. So I just, I don't, it's too much capital for me to invest. I would want to get a case and it's just too much right now. So I'd rather have my money go to more boxes and more cases. So that's just personally where I'm at. But I think, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with Evolving Skies. Uh, next up, we're just going to take a look at the singles real quick. A few of these, uh, we'll just touch on them briefly because, you know, everyone knows the Umbreon. We got, you know, 950 all the way down into the 870s. Um, and it's holding pretty strong here. And listed average price is 1000 So um, we might see a little bit of a dip, but I would expect this to either hold steady or s slowly bounce back a little. Maybe dip a little bit more, you know. But uh, eventually over time... You know, I'd, it just depends on where the market really is going to value these because there are a lot of these cards out there. It's very pop. It's obviously extremely popular, though. Um, so this this could be a new support line at, at 870, and that's where the market values it at. You're seeing 890 sales here. So, um, you know, not not the worst time to be picking it up, but uh, I still would probably wait if it was me personally. I'd, I'd wait a little bit longer, see if we can get another little bit of a dip on this big of a card. Just my just my two cents there. Uh, then we got the Rayquaza. It's obviously on the decline as well. 544 down to 447. Um, so yeah, I, I'd probably see if this one if this one drops as well. If you're looking to pick it up, I wouldn't I wouldn't get it right now personally. I'd ride this decline a little bit more and just see what happens because I'd risk being able to get it for a lot for cheaper and with the downside of having to pay a little bit more. Just my on some of these bigger cards you just never know quite how much further they're going to go then this card has been crazy the leafy on right obviously you can see over the past three months you know we went from 170 up to 350 so absolutely just doubling and we're seeing a downturn here and i would wait same thing on this one i would wait and I, i'd let this i'd let this run out a little bit not that this once again this could just continue to run it, it you never know, but I would wait personally. That would just be my two cents. I'm going to wait and try and time that bottom a little bit better. Then we have Chilling Rain. Um, we're not going to hit touch on this too much, but I just wanted to show another Sword and Shield set that's um, hit the 230s and it kind of got rejected off that. It hasn't dropped too much. We're, at, we're in the 220s still, so uh, I think it's kind of an underrated set. Great set, great box. Um, don't think you could really go wrong um picking up some of that then the blaziken you know it hit 400 and it's it's fallen off um about 50 bucks here 
uh, and it's about at its average price, you know, about 350, right? Although we did see a sale right here. This is pretty low at 304 near mint copy at 304. So that's very interesting. We also had another few days before that near mint at 320. So um, maybe let this one cool off again as well for some of these uh, some of these big chase cards. Let them uh, let them sit. That would be my advice. Um, just keep an eye. if you're keep an eye on the market, you're gonna see when these things start to move, right? Just check it every day. Um, then we'll get into the Scarlet and Violet era. We're not gonna touch on base set too much, but what we have here is is you know Scarlet and Violet looked like it was starting to do good. It looked I thought we were gonna crack 100 on it, and we almost did. It went to 98, and now we're we're down to 93. We there was a 90 dollar sale, so 94 dollars. Um, you know it's the base set, but I still think it's undervalued. Uh, I, I wouldn't be, if this gets back into the 80s somehow, um, I'd be looking to pick up more boxes. Uh, 90s, not a bad entry point though as well, long term. The, the MSRP is 163 or 160, whatever it is. It's in the 160s. So 90s, not a bad entry point, guys. But in the 80s, I would be really jumping on that because it's not really going to, I don't think it's going to go down that much more. All right, then we have... Uh, possibly everyone's favorite set or not everyone's favorite set but the for sealed you know um this is a set i've talked about it before it's held very steady look at this steadiness since may all the way through all of june at that 127 128 range although this is interesting we're seeing a 111 sale but the median price is around 140 so uh this set is just begging for a reprint uh, that's just my opinion. That doesn't mean they're going to, but it's likely that we will see a reprint later this year, and that is what I'm waiting for. However, don't expect a reprint to tank this down to the 80s. You know, we might see sub 100, maybe. It really depends the quantity of the reprint, right? So we, um, but that's what I'm waiting for to pick up some more Paldea. Uh, I have some, but uh, I'm waiting. Once again, it's kind of a waiting game on a lot of these. Now, here's this is one of my favorite cards uh, from this whole era. I do like it. Obviously, it's the uh, I got the Gyarados as the uh, channel logo. But right now, we're seeing a downturn on Magikarp, which is it's crazy that it got to this point. I think, but uh, same thing. I'm probably gonna wait if you're looking to pick up a copy. I'm waiting for the reprint personally because. For the reprint, the print quality could be better. That's what I'm holding out for, and I would hold out to get this in a 10, uh, possibly. So that's just that's just my opinion. I'm going to wait on this card as well. Um, but I have been wrong before, and I'll probably be wrong again. Uh, I wanted to touch on Twilight again because I do think that is very interesting. While it came out at the gate, obviously we know you know when it came out, um, 1:30 pre-release uh it never dipped below 100 although there's a sale right here that does show below 100 but the market price right and the listed median price is 120 125 and we're at 107 so expect to see twilight go and we're going to talk about why i think this might be a decent set to invest in because the greninja now I've talked about it in another video, but you know, I was wrong about the Greninja. I thought this price was going to come down, but I think it's the rarity. I think this card is so hard to pull. I haven't personally really ripped much Twilight. I uh, definitely haven't ripped any booster boxes. All mine are sealed. But if this card is going to continue to do this, which I think is insane, I don't think it's sustainable, but I could be wrong, that this is going to carry that box. Uh, I've heard some people say uh, that this is the Moonbrion of Scarlet and Violet. I don't see that. I don't see that being the case. Now, that is entirely possible, and obviously with where this is going, I mean, look at the average price at 295. This could be cracking. This could be on its way to th being a $300 card. It is 100% possible. I do love the artwork. I always liked this card, but just not at this price point for me. So I'm going to let the craziness... Like, I don't love this card enough to pay this just to own it. Um, I did, I did want to get this card when I saw that, you know, it was announced and everything, but for me, it's too expensive for me and I don't need it. That's, you know, if, if it becomes more affordable, I would love, I would love to be at or below a hundred dollars. It's kind of more of 
where I would be at personally, but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening. So uh, I'm probably going to let this one ride. Um, let me know what you guys' comments are. Um, cool Pokemon, cool art, just insane, insane. Let me know what your guys' theories are it, 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 on why this is just taking off. You also never know who's going to hype this up. Cool Trainer Ryan starts chasing this, or you never know, right? And it's, it could be so difficult to pull, and people are going to see that. Yeah, it's insane. These pull rates are, are crazy. They were so easy at the beginning, and now they're just tightening them up. It's insane. Uh, I also wanted to touch on 151. Uh, a, an amazing set. I'm working on, finally working on master setting it. I uh, got my binder all set up for that. But uh, this is another set that I'm waiting on for reprints. And I've talked about it before, but I just wanted to to show this growth that we we're seeing on these booster bundles, uh, you know, at 40, just $44 is the market price. That's kind of what they've been going for which is crazy um so yeah this is another set it's we saw what they did with japanese this is going to get a reprint i would bet everything on it more than paldea uh, but i think they both see a reprint but um yeah i mean so avoid these don't don't be picking these up we don't although keep in mind we don't know if these will be reprinted because when they reprint these specialty sets we don't know could be elite trainer boxes could be this could be all we we, we don't know there's no way to know but uh if you're looking for packs no just stay away just wait that's my opinion then we have the etbs which is kind of crazy we're in the 60s already so uh, we're about to touch 70 market price uh median price is at 73 so um you know these elite trainer boxes great set where another reprint i'm sure the i would bet that the etbs are a lot more likely to get reprinted but um, that can depend. So 151 doing really well sealed. Uh, if you have sealed uh, elite trainer boxes um, or booster bundles, you might want to start looking at offloading them potentially. I don't know how much longer before like a reprint gets announced or in the can start tanking the price. So just keep that in mind. Um, and once once again, nothing is guaranteed, but just if a reprint is very likely, you guys might want to you might want to just think about that right so you guys can pick some more up um, during the reprint then obviously i just want to touch on some of the big cards here the charizard here it dipped down to you know it was looking like i think it was looking like sub 100 and you even see right here this is lightly played so we'll ignore that but uh it's on the it's on the rise we're up to 125 with the uh, average price at 134 uh, which is great to see uh reprint obviously is going to hurt that but um you know some great value that we're seeing there then the Venusaur, look at the Venusaur, the Venusaur is popping up. We, you could have had it at 35 back here. And we're up to, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to continue to see any growth right now because the average price is what the market price is, $44. But good to see some of the other cards finally, you know, getting a little bit of a lift. The Blastoise, not the same case, peaked at 53, it's back down to 42. Uh, all amazing artworks, you know um nothing more to be said there then the zapdos it's been uh, kind of on a little bit steady of a rise climbing up to the 40s got rejected off that 40 mark and we're seeing uh sub 40 now with the average price of 40 so i would love to see this card uh around the 50 60 dollar range at least uh this card is undervalued i stand by that could quite possibly be my favorite card from this whole set i do have this card i pulled this card out of a booster bundle it did get a psa 10 I'm very happy about that. I will not, it's not for sale. It will never be for sale. It is, yeah, it's just an amazing card. Uh, I really love it. And yeah, I still think it's undervalued. So uh, this video has run a little long. I do apologize. It's been a little bit since I've done any sort of market updates. So I've been ripping some boxes, ripping some packs um, recently. And so that's what the content's been. So I wanted to jump back into this and we kind of covered a wide uh, variety of things. So Thank you for sticking with me. If you guys are this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content. <laughs> you're 18 minutes in. Go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. Let me know if I'm right, if I'm wrong, everything, right? I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.